Embarking on your journey as a filmmaker, it's stressful, it's, you know, it takes a ton of different steps and having an actual entertainment attorney to help you specifically with what happens after you've made your amazing short film, documentary, feature film, whatever it is. Well, the next step is distribution, typically. Now we will we'll get in and talk about in the instance that you want to actually sell your film, but in most instances, you're going to be exploring distribution. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the crucial role of entertainment attorneys in film distribution. Now, of course, with distribution comes the distribution agreement. And I've negotiated like hundreds of distribution agreements. I've been doing this for almost 10 years and there are a lot of repetitive things in distribution agreements. And it kind of makes me laugh sometimes because especially with like the smaller distributors that might not really be able to do too much for you they try to act like the big distributors so it's 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 obviously really important that you actually get an entertainment attorney who is specifically experienced with film work and distribution work but i'm going to give you some amazing tips that you can take away and if you do happen to have a distribution agreement right now you can apply it to your review and analysis so one of the things that i'm always like zoning in on when i review your distribution agreements are things like What's your royalty? How much are you getting paid? But then also, what are the expenses? So this is where they get you in distribution agreements. They will say, uh, maybe there's a flat fee. We're going to charge like ten dollars or $15,000 towards the marketing efforts that we're going to put forth for your film and getting it placed and all the things. What I will negotiate on behalf of clients is to say, well, we don't want to do a flat fee. No flat fees. We will do just actual costs. This actually applies to all agreements that we negotiate in the entertainment industry, but distribution agreements as well. So we want to not have just a flat fee. I want documented, real <laughs> expenses, but then we have to negotiate what happens with that. So typically the distributor gets to pay back themselves from first monies that come in from the film. That's fair, that's reasonable, right? If they had to pay money to get a different language dub of your film, I mean, they get to pay themselves back first. But where they're a little sneaky and you should pay attention is it will say in the contract that they're going to take from your share only. And the reason why there's a difference there is because rather than taking from 100% of all the monies that come in, now what they're doing is the distributor is taking their percentage and then from only your share, they're starting to pay themselves back, okay? So they're kind of like double dipping <laughs> um, versus, you know, if it's just taken from the top, then neither one of you is getting paid until the distributor recoups. So that's one thing I definitely negotiate whenever possible. And then the other thing is has, you know, please get a guarantee of when your film's gonna be distributed. So we wanna make sure that there is a guaranteed release of your film, your project within at least 12 months of signing the contract. And if there isn't, you should be able to terminate the contract because if you sign a contract and let's say, you know, it's to license it for distribution for five years, you know, these companies will try to get you for as long as possible. You wanna negotiate as short as possible, but let's say it's five Five years let's say it's seven years so let's say if it's 10 years they're gonna have control of your film and if they haven't released it in like two years but you can't terminate that's no good so make sure you negotiate to say within 12 months maybe 18 months at the very most that the distributor will have actually distributed the film and let's also you know qualify it with well what does that mean did they put it on youtube that's no good did they distribute it just to like Amazon? Did they, you know, what's the goal? So this is the stuff you want to make sure is in the contracts because at the end of the day, what do you care about? You care about getting paid. You cared about getting your film distributed and hopefully on as many platforms as humanly possible. You care about making sure you get you know, royalty statements that they're actually accounting to you. So because these are the things that are top in mind, we want to make sure that they are very clear in the actual agreement. Now, the next thing that we kind of have to focus on is navigating clearance, because as soon as you get a deal with a distributor, you need to actually go in and have all the contracts. They're like, great love your film, we're signing it, hopefully it's a super legit distributor. Well, they're gonna say, I need your location agreements, I need your cast and crew agreements, I need your talent waivers, I need all the things. Give me a copy of the insurance. And so if you're kind of newer to this, or maybe you weren't quite as organized as you had hoped that things would be because someone else was overseeing it, whatever this situation is, if you don't have those documents, then you may lose the deal just for that reason alone because the distributor needs to have that stuff. But the other piece of it is that, you know, you might be interested in selling at a client who's documentary did so good and just got tons of awards and um this person ended up getting an offer like a really substantial offer to just outright buy the film just you know from the having it in in you know these festivals which was amazing so same kind of situation if someone wants to buy the film well the chain of title 
which is what we call it, chain of title showing that you own it, you have your copyrights, you have your contracts, it's that much more important because you can't assign all the things if you don't have all the things. Other than that, you know, protecting your intellectual property, right? I just mentioned copyrights. You have to make sure you copyright not just the film, but make sure you copyright the actual script as well. So two, you should have two different registrations. Um, and then, you know, with the trademark, you know, you may or may not want or need that depending on what you're doing with your company, whether this is, you know, a bunch of films, it's the same name, you know, it totally depends on the situation, but you want to make sure you are protecting the IP because that's the thing that's valuable. That's the thing you're licensing. So if someone comes, steals your film, we have to sue them. If you don't have your copyrights, you might be precluded from seeking statutory damages and attorney's fees. It's a nightmare. So make sure you're going through those steps, getting your IP registered. And then look, when you have an actual entertainment attorney who helped you through the distribution agreement process, it's very helpful that that person it's still kind of around on the general roster when an issue comes up, because guess what? You might have a problem with the distributor. They didn't release the film when they said they were going to release it. They didn't pay you. They didn't send the accounting. I mean, the accounting stuff, too, to be honest, is one of the biggest issues of why people contact my office, because we have to make a demand. We need to do an audit. But there are, there are a host of other issues that come up. So you want to make sure you have someone in your corner. And it's helpful if it was the same person that actually reviewed the contract. That's been my experience in any case. And then beyond that, you know, building those, then this is kind of a pro tip, building those relationships with distributors is probably one of the best things that you can do. I had a client who got so fed up of trying to work with other people who just take a very large share, you know, and, and it's just part of the deal. If you're going to work with a distributor, they're going to take a large piece of the pie. And so he ended up starting his own distribution network, partially through like a website and then having a Roku channel. And so you can kind of do stuff for yourself as well, if you want to maintain 100% of the control, 100% of everything that happens with the film and the distribution. So with all that being said, go back to the distribution agreement. Please make sure you fully understand. Hire an entertainment attorney to get some help. If you need some assistance, contact Delgado Entertainment Law. We got you covered.